Greetings and welcome to No BS Baking. We got JP here now. I'm trying to do a little bit of exercising and trying to keep in shape or something for 2022. It's my resolution. But I want to talk a little bit about salt. Uh, this is an extended version of the previous video that I just did. Gets into salt a little bit more. Which one's better? And what can I do to reduce my sodium intake? but not compromise the overall performance and flavor of my bread. And I've got a winner for you right now, so let's go. So the recommended daily intake for an adult is around 2,300 milligrams of sodium Western countries are, though we eat a lot more sodium than we should, we're really up around the 3,400 on an average. Health experts are recommending even lower amounts of 1,500 milligrams a day, especially if you've got like high blood pressure or heart disease or one of these other sodium enhanced um, uh, illnesses. Now, the American Heart Association's got their list they call the Salty Six. And as you can see, you got bread, cold cuts, pizza, processed poultry, canned soup, and sandwiches are their top Salty Six uh, items that um, most people um, eat. Now, if you're looking at health claims on packaging, here is a list of some of the health claims that they have on packaging and exactly what it means. I want to move along pretty quickly here, so just pause this if you want to take a look. Iodized salt versus non-iodized salt. Now, I briefly touched on this in my last video and said I prefer non-iodized salt, and you should use that. Well, the real reason for that is because non-iodized salt imparts a cleaner, pure taste. Many bakers and chefs will say that they prefer to use non-iodized salt because of this metallic, almost a chemical taste that you can get in some recipes from and through the use of iodized salt. Now, if I had an iodine uh, deficiency in my, uh, in my diet, well then, you know, I'd continue using iodized salt. From a, ba from a baking perspective, uh, they both perform exactly the same. And uh, from a health perspective, I don't know if any of them are healthier or not, not healthier than the other. So it's the, the same, they're the same program. <laughs> sea salt is mostly sodium chloride. Now, it does contain um, other salts in it due that it's uh, a salt produced from the evaporation of ocean water. So depending on which ocean or which uh, um, saltwater lake that it was derived from, um, it could contain other salts from 0.2 to 10%. Now, is it better than regular table salt? Well, some people say, well, it's less processed, you know, and it, it's got, it retains some other trace minerals, you know, specific to that region, and it's got some coloring components that it adds to your, to your products, and maybe some slight flavor, uh, flavor notes that you get. But generally, from a nutritional standpoint, sodium chloride is sodium chloride, and uh, it's... Uh, of all about the same when it comes to when it comes to health. One of the other salts that that bakers really like is they like kosher salt, and the beautiful thing about kosher salt is it re it's really cross-functional across the kitchen. You can use it in cooking, you can use it in baking. It is almost all well all sodium chloride. And so it doesn't contain any of the other little additives that and anti-caking agents uh, that might be in other salts and ultimately gives you a cleaner, purer taste. Now, also keep in mind, as I mentioned previously in my video, other video, is that the measurements are different. The volume considerations that you have to have. If you have um, a standard fine table salt and you put it into your little measuring spoon, you need a level to the top where it has the little line and all that stuff. Well, coarse 
sea salt or kosher salt, you may need to add more. That is the reason why when you're using these coarser salts, always better to weigh them out. So from an overall performance standpoint, covering off all of the bases with respect to bread baking, nothing beats sodium chloride. Currently, there's no comparable substitute for NaCl in bread baking. So when it comes to sodium replacers, when you're cooking with sodium substitutes, it works well. It's really just about imparting that salty kind of flavor into whatever your, uh, your uh, cooking recipe is. But when you're baking, it's a different story because of the chemical uh, reactions that salt has in the dough system. So when it comes to baking, nothing replaces sodium chloride. Now, if you're looking to reduce sodium in your diet, then consider this. One slice of bread contains 100 to 200 milligrams of sodium. I'm talking one slice. Two slices is 15% of your recommended daily intake of sodium. And that's before you even add any spreads, you don't put butter on there, anything. No fillings, no nothing. Uh, so you can see that it's quite a bit of salt in each loaf of, or slice of bread. However, we got options. And so let's talk about this option that I'm going to give you right now to reduce sodium without sacrificing anything. So the product I want to talk about is potassium chloride. Now there's a lot of hype, and it has been for a number of years in the technical journals about potassium chloride. It's become a major part of um, sodium replacements uh, throughout the food industry and but they're still learning more and more about it they, they don't have all of it all figured out yet however I will tell you this it has a similar reaction in the dough system as sodium chloride the baking performance perfect works just like sodium chloride and Another benefit is that it reduces the amount of sodium in the diet and provides potassium to the diet, which is uh, we're often short of in, um, in our lives. As you can see down here, we've got uh, the sodium max is 2,300 milligrams. That's what they're kind of saying is a maximum. Our average generally around the world is around 3,600 milligrams. You can see that we're way over the top on that. However, potassium is 4,700 milligrams is recommended for an adult uh, and 2,800 milligrams is the average of what we have. So there's a lot of opportunity there to increase our potassium and reduce our sodium. So there's been a number of tech papers out there and some universities and stuff throughout the last few years that have been doing a lot of work on potassium chloride. So it's been determined that you can reduce uh, the amount of sodium in your bread quickly and easily by 25% with no flavor changes, no, no changes in uh, the performance of your dough by substituting 25% potassium chloride uh, as a replacement for sodium chloride. Now, in this experiment, one I looked at from, uh, ooh, I can't even remember the university, but uh, they reduced 50%. And in actuality, the flavor changes were noted, but they were still deemed acceptable. Uh, and the dough performance was the same, if not better. And they actually got better volume out of their product using 50% reduction uh, of salt, replacing it with potassium chloride. Now, the beautiful part about this is that You've knocked out 50% of your um, sodium intake and you've uh, increased the potassium intake into your diet uh, um, all in one fell swoop. However, if you go over levels of 50% with potassium chloride, you really start noticing the flavor. And that's where people were starting to say, oh, I can totally taste something. 
um, it, it, it becomes undesirable to go higher than those levels. However, from a performance characteristic, potassium chloride uh, performs as good as table salt, which makes it very exciting for the industry. So anyway, it's exciting times in the food industry. Potassium chloride already been out there for a few years, already showing its face in, in some of the, the soups and different types of products that are being produced by the food industry as uh, sodium reduced and et cetera, et cetera. Uh, becoming very, very popular. Still hasn't worked its way into the mainstream baking yet, but it's coming along. Um, however, I totally recommend you give this a try. You can buy potassium chloride online, follow the replacement uh, numbers that I've given you up to a max of 50%, knock your sodium levels down right now, and let's get on with happier and healthier living for 2022.